this is your divine appointment. You know, I just um, having a little cup of coffee right now, a little tea actually, and I'm drinking it out of a special cup. This cup is, you know, we at this time of year, we have so many memories and so many people that give us gifts and have little mementos. And this happens to be a cup that my sister has painted for me. We are very artistic in our family, so all of us paint and do things like that. And this is a, a winter scene in this cup. And I just thought that was really pretty. If you look at it really close, it's very Christmassy. Very Christmassy. It's got a barn and some fencing and beautiful trees and snow. And um, so I'm drinking out of my cup just to just have fun memories thinking about these things as I'm sitting with you. And I know that you have lots of things that have um, that you have memories about at this time of the year. And you know what? Um, I was thinking about something that happened quite a few years ago, and I'll share that story in just a moment because this is a time, all, I mean, every day is a day to share the good things of God and the glory of God and what He does in our life. So, um, you know, I just want you to, to know that we each have gifts. And we each have so much within us that God has given us. Those of us that are Christians, that are walking with the Lord, <clears throat> we have gifts and giftings within us. And um, just like the story of um, John the Baptist in the Bible, his calling was to um, baptize people and bring them into repentance to receive the Lord. And he, actually, when Jesus came on the scene, he baptized Jesus. It was beautiful, that whole story. And you can find that story, um, among others, in the Ten Commandments. And I'm just sharing a few things that we have watched over the holiday season and over Christmas. This is Ten Commandments. We have a lot of beautiful, classic movies that we watch over and over, all year long. And uh, this one is magnificent. It's made by uh, metro golden Mayor. And it's an Academy Award winner. It's from 1956. And as you can see, it's got a glorious uh, picture of uh, Moses, who is played by with uh, Charlton Heston. And um, I think I can open this up and show you. Well, actually, the best way is just to look at the cover. And the cover is a close-up of Charlton Heston. I love his acting. He was always such a beautiful actor, and he's gone now. And um, but anyway, you know what? These are all these different beautiful stories in the Bible are people that have been gifted by God and are called according to His purpose to just do the things that He's called them to do. Each one of us have something to do for the Lord. And my um, cat is wanting to get where I have everything all set up here by my camera. Get you don't go there. Can we do it? You know, <laughs> he's gonna do it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here he is. He's my culprit. He always gets into trouble when I've got anything near his curtains. He's so pretty. He is my man coon. He's uh, a part man coon, and he's got the most beautiful markings. But he's trouble. He loves to get into trouble. But we have fun with him. So anyway, as I'm sharing this, <clears throat> he's just wanting to get in on the picture. And I'm going to try to make room for him to go sit down. <laughs> but anyway, getting back to my story, I hope and pray he doesn't come back again. Because he is a mischief maker. So anyway, you know, Moses did his job and he did it so well. He brought people into repentance during a time when the Romans... Even the uh, temple, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the people of God were not, you know, they were just, they were in such sin and such horrible, you know, um, it was really, really very sad, all the things that were taking place in that time when Moses came on the scene. And of course, Jesus appeared in, into, the, into the crowd and Moses baptized him. And um, when that all happened, it was the most beautiful thing. And then after that, um, Jesus went to the mountains and he fasted and he prayed. It was the beginning of his calling on this earth to you and I. And he was tempted by the devil 40 days. And um, the whole story is so beautiful. Read the Old Testament in Genesis, Exodus, it's just the most beautiful story. And in fact, 
the uh, Ten Commandments, you will experience the most beautiful scene of the opening and the parting of the Red Sea, which is glorious to see. And um, you know, these movies we watch year round. We get we have a lot of movies we watch year round, and one of them is of course the um, the story of Jesus. This, this happens to be one for children, but there's all different kinds you can get. This is the story of Jesus, and this is just one other. <clears throat> we have a, a truck going by right now, but he'll be gone in a second. This is the uh, Christmas Blessing. This is another, just another story. You can find all kinds of movies, but you know what? We need to look for good viewing for our families. We need to look for good movies and good things to watch on TV. Because in, this, in the day that we're living in, we're getting a lot of dark stuff on TV. And what goes in, comes out. You know, if you, you spend a lot of hours, a lot of time watching and um, things that are dark and are not of God um, continually, it's just, it, it's going to come out. The Lord says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So things like that will eventually come out. And it does affect your life as well tremendously. So get Ten Commandments. It's a beautiful story. Another one that's excellent is the Nativity. And that's a beautiful story also of Jesus and the birth of Jesus. And that was at the movies a couple of years ago. Beautiful story. And um, we watched last night the miracle. I mean, it's a wonderful life. And it's an old, old movie, but it's so good. And actually the story is about an angel appearing to a man who had just gone as far as he could go. He lost all of his money. He lost, was losing his business. Um, everything was falling apart in his life, and that part is played by Jimmy Stewart, never another like him. In that, movie, uh, in that movie, he just falls apart because everything was just crumbling in his life. Uh, there was a, a bank fell apart. His, his, his loan company fell apart, and there was a greedy man, I'm gonna say like a Scrooge in the picture, and he wanted to get all the town um, he wanted to just collect everybody's houses and um, he was very wealthy and, and um, so everything was turning in that direction where he was losing everything and this, this man in the movie, the other man who owned the bank, was going to just take everything. Well, an angel appeared on the scene because of the prayers of God's people, okay? Because of the prayers of God's people. You know, at Christmas time, we have so many memories of so many things that happen in our life. And we pray, we ask God to intervene, and we have so many miracles to share. I'm going to share one with you. But um, get, get that story. It's a wonderful life. If you haven't seen it, it's an awesome classic. It's a beautiful story. And it turns out awesome. An angel appears on the scene to help him. It's kind of funny that what the angel he does and what he says, and he really helps uh, Jimmy Stewart get through. And um, it all turns out wonderful. It's a blessing. You'll cry, you'll laugh, and you'll just really draw closer to Jesus. Watching all these movies are so good. But you know what? We need to be real sensitive to the Holy Spirit this time of year. And we need to really realize that there are a lot of people that are in need and, and are just really, um, sometimes they never share. They never tell us. And a friend of mine was in great need. And, uh, and um, I didn't know it. But you know the gifts that are within us have to operate. God wants them to operate. You need to use your giftings. Whatever your giftings are, give God the glory and use them. One day the Lord told me to take everything out of our pantry. I shared this a long time back, but I want to share it again because it just fits with Christmas and the holiday time of year. He told me to take everything out of my cabinets, and I had a lot. I had a lot of food. We had just come back from a um, kind of a festival-type picnic, and Doug was involved, and he was the manager of this business. And there was so much food left over that we had in our freezer, so we decided to take every... I, I shouldn't say I decided. I really felt led of the Lord to take um, food over to my friend's house. Just h half of everything I had in my cabinet, I just felt led of the Lord to just half it. Half sugar, half flour, whatever I had. If I had two, two things of flour, I gave one, I put one in a box for my friend. If I had two sugars, I put one box of sugar or one container of five pounds of sugar. So sh it was more than just a half. I mean, I was giving um, all, everything I had. I was giving duplicates of anything I had duplicates I was giving away. So she was needy. There was just a lot of, they had four teenage, teenage boys. Our girls were like preteen age, you know, one was like 11, 12, and there was one that was nine and um, seven. 
and um, my oldest daughter was actually, I believe she was 12 or 13. So um, we knew how hard it was to raise kids and when you're walking with the Lord and really walk on by faith, sometimes it can be really difficult. I took everything in my kitchen cabinets and cut them in half and I had a huge amount of bratwurst, which are really good um, sausages that are specially made and we had them, they were specially made for this gathering that we had at this time in the holidays, this big picnic we had outdoors because it was warm year round where we live always. So um, we took everything in a big box and I told this friend of mine, I said, we're coming over and I have a surprise for you. And when I got there, we pulled up into her apartment complex and we pulled up into the driveway and she threw open the balcony windows and she just started praising the Lord. She just said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And um, we came in the house and do you know that we came in the house, she threw open all of her cabinets and they were totally barren. Totally, there was not, I was shocked. I was shocked. They were totally barren. And as she got to the freezer, and we looked, started taking out the food. I want to make sure you understand this. She planted, anyway, we opened up the boxes, and out of the food, there was the bratwurst, and there was a lot of it. We gave it, to, I'm not really crazy about it. My husband likes it, but it, it's rich for me. So I didn't want it and uh, as much. I just want a little bit for home. But I gave her a lot. Oh, there was potato salad and coleslaw and the bratwurst and bread and flour and sugar and a lot of condiments and things like that. Well, she just was hysterical when she saw the bratwurst. She ran to her freezer. After she had opened up all the cabinets, she ran to her freezer and opened up the freezer door. And she showed us a little bitty package of bratwurst that she would not eat. They had no food. They had nothing left. She opened up that one, that the freezer, and she showed us the bratwurst, and she said, we were not going to eat this. This was seed faith, believing God to bring back to us a hundredfold our seed that we had placed. That's all we had left. We were not going to eat our seed that was planted for the Lord to bring back to us a hundredfold. And you know, when you believe God and you believe his scriptures, God will come to you mightily. But a lot of people don't know how to believe because we live in a world where we have everything. When we believe by faith and we have nothing, that's when God can really intervene. When we have no more hope, no more places to run, no one to go to, it's God who intervenes in the most beautiful, miraculous ways. And that's the miracle of the bratwurst. It's a beautiful story. I love to share it because it builds faith and it helps people to understand that God is there for us. He is really there for us. He's a miracle working God, as I shared in all these movies, which are faith building movies, that we need more of God in our life. We need him. This is Christmas. This is We're celebrating the Christmas that Christ was born. He is the miracle worker. He walked on the water. He, 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 he called Moses to open up the Red Sea, and he did it. He did so many signs and wonders and miracles all over the Bible. You know what? I want you to believe this Christmas and always that Jesus is yours for the gift, for the taking. Just ask him into your life. Those of you that don't know Jesus and that expect, have not accepted him into your life totally as your Savior and Lord, I just want to pray for you right now, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for my friends that they'd receive Jesus. They receive you into their heart and their life and experience the wonderful life in Christ Jesus that we as Christians believe and know of the most beautiful life and the most greatest, greatest, beautiful miracle of all is receiving Jesus. In Jesus' name, I ask you and just ask him into your life. Just five little words, Jesus, come into my heart. God bless you this Christmas and always. I'll see you next time. This has been a divine appointment.